Here's a problem to do with synchronizing slices that you may find useful. As an example here, I've got an achievements table and an assessments table. And both of those tables have got a column called lesson, or class rather. A class column there and a class column here. In actual fact, behind the scenes, those two columns are from completely separate tables. So it's not the same uh, column that we're looking at here. It's two separate columns in two separate tables. One's achievements and one's an assessment. One records in which lesson a pupil got a certain achievement and one records in which lesson a pupil got a certain assessment. And what I want to do is put a slicer on here that controls both tables. Uh, if you try this, so if I had a slicer now, I have to initially choose one of the slicers, and I'm going to choose the sli a slicer based on the course that's located in my achievement uh, file here. So I'll, choose, I'll take it here and drop it onto the slicer. So that creates a slicer that lists all the lessons that are in the achievements table down here. And of course, I can choose a particular class, and I can expect this uh, achievements uh, table to filter based on what I choose here in the class slicer. But of course in assessments here, which is using a different uh, class column, the filter doesn't work because we, we're not really filtering the same thing at all here. This is a completely separate column down the side. So of course what we could do is put another filter on here and base this one instead on uh, the, the lesson, uh, the class rather that appears in my assessment table, which is this one here. So I could drop that onto a slicer. And now this gives me all the classes that appear in the assessments table. But if I change the slicer here, there's no link between the two. So again, this slicer doesn't change. We wouldn't expect it to change. And these assessments don't change. So these two halves of the screen are still effectively separate from each other. But there's a relatively easy and quick way to link these two slices so they are synchronized. The thing to notice, of course, with this technique is it relies on the columns being separate, but the values in the columns at least being uh, the same for at least some of the values within those columns. So yes, uh, I know I've got uh, this particular lesson code does appear in both tables. Obviously, if it's a completely different set of lesson codes, this wouldn't work. But assuming at least some of these values are common between both tables, this should work. OK, how do we get this to work? Well, what we need to do is open up the sync sliders pane. Now, you'll find that is on the view menu. So I'll click on the view menu if you've not done so already and click on sync slices there. And that comes up with a list of all the slices that are on the screen. Now you have to do this with each slicer in turn. So I've highlighted the first one here and under advanced options, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it uh, class group. And then I'll go to the next slicer and give that a name too. I'll call, but I'll give it the same name. Now it has to be the same name. So this is how it's going to link the two by having the same class name for each. So once you've given them the same name, oops, once you've given them the same name, they should work together. So if I choose um, this class here, which I know exists in both sides of the table, you'll see that immediately both sides of the table synchronize to show that particular class. So I'm seeing this one class here, 10x MA3 on this side and 10x MA3 on that side. If I choose a class that exists on one side but not the other, as you'd expect, you get this filtered here with the pupils in that particular class but nothing on this side. But so long as the class appears on both sides of the table, both sides will work in synchronization. And you'll see there that I've highlighted 11x MA3 on this side. And although I've got to scroll down a little bit, 11x MA3, lo and behold, is highlighted on this side. So both slices now working together. Wherever there's an overlap in the values, those two slices will work together. So that's a really useful technique for synchronizing two separate slices.